A doutora Fátima Mariam Hussain, geriatra no Programa de Saúde Sénior no William Osler Health System, depois da sua licenciatura em Medicina no Royal College of Surgeons, na Irlanda, concluiu a sua residência em Medicina Interna no Exempla St. Joseph Hospital, em Denver, no Colorado, Estados Unidos da América, e a sua bolsa de estudos em Geriatria na Universidade de Manitoba, no Canadá. As quedas são a razão mais comum para a hospitalização relacionada com lesões entre os idosos canadianos. Por esse motivo, a doutora Hussain decidiu a vir aos nossos estúdios para nos dar dicas que ajudam a prevenir estas situações. Hello, Dr. Hussain. Hi, how are you? Good, thank you. First of all, I want to thank you for coming to our studios and talking about this very important topic. It's my pleasure, thank you for having me. So, first of all, Why did you decide to create the, those five, five tips? Any re special reason? So November is Canadian Falls Prevention Month and falls cause significant uh, injuries and can even be life-threatening in a lot of elderly people. And so we thought that it was an important opportunity to get education out to the, our wider community to try and help People do simple things to try and minimize their risk of falls. So let's start with the first tip. Mm -hmm. It's to be careful with objects that can cause falls, right? right? Can you explain a little bit? So a big reason for why a lot of people fall is their environment. And what the, I mean by that is in our households, we often have um, areas which are very poorly lit, There are, especially when people get up to go to the washroom at nighttime, often people won't switch on a light, they'll trip over something. And a lot of hip fractures actually happen because of a fall in, at nighttime. Um, so the first tip is to just be careful of, first of all, minimizing the um, trip hazards around the house, things like loose rugs or uh, long extension cords, making sure there's adequate lighting and so on. Uh, in order to minimize the risk of a trip and fall. Makes all sense. <laughs> so the second step is regarding the care of the eyes, mm -hmm. right? So what do you recommend for the visual health of the elderly? So a lot of elderly people have difficulty as they get older with medical issues such as cataracts or glaucoma. It is important in both people who have medical issues like that, but also just most of us who, a lot of us who wear glasses, and as we get older, we have to wear reading glasses to make sure that we've had our eyes checked, that our eyes prescription is up to date, that we make sure that we don't walk whilst wearing reading glasses, because that does um, affect your depth perception and makes it more easy to fall, especially on stairs. Managing medication, is the third step. Mm -hmm. Please explain how the side effects, for example, increase risk of fall. So there is certain classes of medications that are recommended to not be used in older age. For example, as people get older, they often have trouble sleeping. And so they then start taking sleeping aids, either prescription or over the counter. And a lot of those medications can increase the risk of sleepiness, they affect the balance, they make people more confused, and they can increase the risk of falls. There are other medications also that can affect falls risk, but ultimately the most important thing for medications is, obviously nobody should be starting or stopping a medication without speaking to their healthcare practitioner. And so if you have a concern about your medications, then I would suggest you follow up with your family doctor or your pharmacist to take a look and see if there's something going on that could be improved upon. Physically, activity is the fourth tip, mm -hmm. right? But overdoing is, isn't good either. No. Mm -hmm. Do suggest professional guidance. Um, professional, hiring professionals to assist with things like training is great if that's something that's within your ability to do. But simple things like daily walks, up to 30 minutes of vigorous activity a day, swimming. Um, there is particular uh, activities like Tai Chi, 
which are actually, the research has shown, they are, uh, Tai Chi actually clinically decreases the risk of falls. And we actually do have a Tai Chi center around Brampton, it's just north of us. Um, and so there are lots of different ways you can get your exercise, but you're right. Start, there is a phrase in geriatrics, start low and go slow. <laughs> and so I wouldn't suggest starting off running a marathon on your first day, because then you won't be able to get up. Good advice. <laughs> and the last tip, but not least, is a healthy diet. Mm -hmm. How can not taking this precaution increase the risk of fall? Um, as we get older, we're very prone to not eating a balanced diet, and there's lots of reasons for that. Uh, but it is important that we not only get adequate numbers of calories, but also that there's balance in our diet, that we pay attention to micronutrients like vitamin D and calcium in particular, which is very important for both bone health as well as muscle strength and muscle health. Um, and so the overall point is ensure that you're getting the right number of calories and that they're, the composition of the calories is the correct ratio, the correct balance, and making sure that you pay thing, attention to things like adequate vitamin D, calcium, supplementation, if necessary, and so on. There is a lot of technology, mm -hmm. actually, nowadays. Mm -hmm. Uh, that can help elderly people with, with the issue of falls, uh, like necklaces, mm -hmm. bracelets, to provide alerts mm -hmm. if they are alone at home, and mm -hmm. there is a lot of them who really live that way. So do you also think this is important? It is very important. In fact, in our um, clinic, whenever we, at the William Osler Health Center, whenever we assess somebody for falls as part of our comprehensive workup, uh, often one of the recommendations we make is that if somebody lives alone or even if they're alone for extended periods of time while their loved ones are at work, that they should have some kind of alert system on their person. Some of them are necklaces, others you wear on the wrist. There are certain types that have something called an auto alert s feature on them, which automatically alerts either your loved one or EMS if you, are, if you fall and are unable to get up. And so- It's yes. just to press a button. Yes, right? and, it, and the auto alert ones actually um, sense the change in position. Mm -hmm. And so you don't even have to press the button because sometimes, unfortunately, what happens is that when an older person falls, they can't get to the button. Mm -hmm. And so the auto alert helps with that kind of situation. That is wonderful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let's close then with a final message uh, for the elderly who are watching us right now. Yep. Do you want to say something, please? So ultimately, the goal of every geriatrician and the healthcare system at large is to help people age in place. And what that means is we want people to live healthy, happy lives out in the community, which is where most people want to be spending their geriatric years. And so the f one of the things that is a big part of that is ensuring that we minimize falls as much as possible. And there's a variety, as we've discussed, of very simple things that one can do to minimize the risk of falls. Thank you so much, Dr. Hussain. It was a pleasure to have you here. And I think it's very important kind of tips people need to hear. Thank you, Thank so, you so much, much for having me, Elena.